In this scene I have an island with some trees on it and as sometimes happens when you've added quite a few additional elements that have got fairly complex geometry Bryce can become somewhat unresponsive when you're swapping between the various labs and going to menus and this is a little bit annoying particularly if you've got the elements in your scene where you want them and you're not really doing anything else to them so there is a workaround so what I can do is work on parts of the scene and make sure these other bits of the scene while I can guarantee that they come in where I need them I can get rid of them temporarily now if I select the trees and in the attributes hide them that makes them disappear as far as the render is concerned as you can see I need to work on the lighting in the scene a bit We're still on the default sky but as far as the memory usage and the menus and the labs are concerned the trees are still slowing things down for us so instead of hiding them what I'll do is I'll delete them but before I delete them I make sure I've got this saved so I'll just save this and then my trees are safe well the next file I'm going to generate is going to be without the trees but that's not really going to be a problem because I've got the trees saved in this first file so there they are there are my trees so I select the trees and I just delete them there they've gone and then I'll, I'll do a little bit of work on the lighting so let's see we'll go into the uh, library here and I'll use this sky Utah blue and see how that looks okay so we've got some very dark shadow regions and this low lying haze you can lift the haze by lifting the cloud height here and so I'll just lift the haze a little bit and see how that looks see if it looks a bit more realistic so this is giving a, a sense of scale it's pushed this uh, bit of the island back and you've got a sense of depth now but the lighting's still very basic so what I'll do is I'll go into the sky lab and select image based lighting I'm going to use sky use sky dome only so that's selected I'll turn the quality down press use sky and that'll generate a little HDRI from this sky you can see in the preview here by using render in scene the islands now rather dark so I'll increase the HDRI effect we'll try 65 so that's lit the island a bit but it's no key light to provide a bit of key light what I can do is re-enable the sunlight I'll just disable link to sun so I'm just position the sun in the sky so you can see that some of the sun glow is changing the gradient of light on the uh, on the sky there so we've got a bit of difference of blues um, and I think I'll just make it a bit orange I mean, it's, it's really sort of irrelevant this bit of it I'm just uh, demonstrating what you can you can do with the lighting quite quickly so let's say I'm happy now with that lighting but obviously I'm without trees and I need my trees back in here so what I'll do is I'll go save as and because my last one was saved as v2 this has automatically incremented the file name when I use save as to v3 so the files won't um, overwrite each other so now I've got my lighting set up in this scene I need my trees back in on the island where they were before so I'll load my original scene I can do it I could drag and drop it from my second monitor but uh, I recommend having a second monitor if you've got the chance even if it's a you know fairly old one because it's a really useful system but what I'll do is go file and open and I'll open my v2 file there so this is the file that was saved with the uh, with the trees in even though I didn't render them there because I was showing you something else the hide property I'll select my trees by using the select tool there so that's a little tree selection tool and edit and copy or you can use control C it just it's easier to show you if I use the edit menu there and then I'll go file open and go down and find the one I've just saved which uh, was v3 which is there so that's the one that I did in the save as and it had incremented it from v2 so that's where I've set the lighting up and then I go edit and paste and the trees appear exactly where they were in the last scene which is very handy so now I can do my render and I've got my trees in and um, when I was setting the lighting up I wasn't slowed down by the fact that the trees were there as it happens that isn't enough trees to really punish Bryce but if you start building enormous forests then you'll begin to feel the lack of response and uh, you'll move something and then you'll have to wait 
um, maybe 30 seconds before Bryce becomes responsive again as it updates all its wireframes. Uh, I don't know why it's become such a problem. It wasn't so in Bryce 5, but uh, as uh, as the program's been developed, then this, this problem has also developed. So here's a little workaround that allows you to uh, to get past this. And I suppose that's the end of the tutorial. So I hope you have found that uh, strategy useful and uh, just experiment with it in, in a practice scene so uh, you get to grips with it and, and then you'll be able to use it on your scenes. And I, I recommend using a number at the end of your file name when you save a scene and then just using save as continually and the number will increment up and you'll have lots and lots of scenes as, as you've made adjustments and each time you make an adjustment you can you can save as and then you can go back to an earlier stage if you if you judge that you've made a mistake or as sometimes happens depending on the feature you're using in Bryce it might crash um, particularly so is if you use instancing that can cause Bryce to hang because it slows things down a lot and I would recommend not using displacement in the materials unless you're doing it uh, very carefully and on a single core machine or if you set the priority to low for some reason there's a bug in there and if and Graham Dretch found that but anyway I'm digressing sorry right so that's the end of the tutorial